Hey everybody, um, it's me. This is um, my vlog. Uh, I think it's 135. Um, I hope I look okay. <laughs> um, it's been tough. It's been real tough. Um, but I'm staying optimistic. Um, there was this one place that I had um, applied at. I, I, I filled the application out for it. It's this big warehouse company, and I filled out the application for it about three or four days ago. Maybe not even that long. I think it was like two two days ago, two or three days ago. I've, I've filled out so many apps, I don't even remember. <laughs> um, and I called there. And when I, I filled out the app and immediately called to see if I could try to get an, um, an interview. And this was two or three days ago, like on the day that I had filled it out initially. And um, when I called, this woman got on the phone and said, you know, that the person I would need to speak with, and she gave me her name, she said she won't be back till Monday. And I was like, Monday, that's not going to help me any. I need something now. You know, I didn't say this, but in my mind I'm thinking this, you know. So, um, something told me to try again this morning. Um, I called back, I, I called back three places that I had filled applications out within these past two days amongst all the other many applications and resumes I've sent off. And, um, I spoke to one of the places I spoke to two, I spoke to the same manager twice and, um, he told me the first time I spoke with him, he told me that, um, you know, he, he was very genuine and he can tell that I am very genuine and that I was really in need of some work. And um, he um, he said, OK, well, the hiring manager will be in at 12 today. Um, as soon as she gets here, I'll, I'll, I'll give her your name and tell her to pull your application. Well, I never heard from him. And this was... Um, God, my days are getting so confused. This was yesterday. So, um, no, this was the day before yesterday. So, I finally decided to call him back um, yesterday. And I was like, I I'm not trying to be a nuisance, but I was just, I never heard back from you. And I was just wondering if you had given, you know, passed my name on. He said that he had missed her yesterday, but that he was going to do it today, which was, which was yesterday. And, um... He was like, and, and I will have her call you. And um, so I never heard anything. Well, for that big, now that was for another company. That conversation with that manager was from another company. Um, it was like a grocery store company. And, um, but the, the big warehouse company that I'm talking about, um, that I filled the application out for two or three days ago and the woman went, was was like, well, the woman you need to speak to won't be back till Monday. That's who I'm talking about right now. So now, with that, something told me to try again this morning. And so I called like um, an hour before they even opened at this big warehouse company and um, I sat on the phone until somebody picked up the phone. And then um, a woman picked up the phone and I asked to speak to a manager. And then I was on hold for over 20 minutes. And then I finally hung up and called back. And the woman was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She got the manager, one of the managers on the phone. And I spoke with him over the phone. And um, I basically was like, look, I'll clean toilets. You know, what, what, whatever I can do to get hired, to get this job. And I was like, you know, I have over 15 plus years experience in sales, retail sales, shipping and receiving, customer service, customer relations, inventory. I know how to use a jack. I know how to use a forklift. I know how to unload a truck. I know how to do work, work, work on a dock in the back where the trucks are unloaded and loaded. I know how to load a truck. I know how to do all of these things. I've, you know, and, and, and I, I have previous warehouse experience. Um, you know, I'm just trying to see, can I please get an interview? And so he was like, well, um, you know, I would definitely have somebody call you back today, which is today. And um, I was like, so they're going to call me back today. And he was like, today. And um, 
about two hours later, um, I decided that I wasn't going to wait. And there was another business, retail business, that was across the street from this big warehouse business. And um, so I went over there. I filled out an application because they only had paper applications. So there was none online that I could fill out. Otherwise, I would have filled it out by now, you know, by then. So, um, and I talked with one of the managers. She wasn't the hiring manager, but I talked to one of the managers. And she said that the hiring manager would not be in until tomorrow, um, which is tomorrow. And, um, you know, but that she would definitely pass my application along and, and, and have him give me a call. So, um... I decided to walk up into that warehouse, that big warehouse company, and see if I could just meet with somebody and just let them know. You know, I know I spoke with somebody this man. You know, I know I spoke with the manager this morning, but um, you know, I, I, I'm I'm in the area, and so I'm here to see if I can possibly get an interview. Now I waited. I'd say it was an hour. I waited for an hour until a manager came to me. I mean, they were busy, and at first they couldn't find the manager. Um, I didn't get his name when I spoke with him this morning over the phone, and I should have, but I didn't. Um, and so they thought it was this one manager, um, and then when he came up to me, he didn't know who I was, so I explained to him that I had called earlier this morning and spoke, spoke with some manager, but I did not get his name. And so he was able to find that manager and find, um, and so they decided to meet with me. It was, two, it was two managers, and they met with me in like a pre-interview process today. Um, everything went good, and um, I have an interview set up with them tomorrow morning, like for the initial interview tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. And I'm just praying to God that this works out in my favor. Um, you know, when I was in the church, um, I used to be a minister, a deliverance minister. I don't know if, if anybody's watching this and they're new to my channel. Um, I used to be a deliverance minister a while ago, like it was a, a long time ago, and I learned a lot about myself, um, I learned a lot about Christ, and I learned just a lot about people and in life, and, but there was this one woman that I had never heard of. And I studied. I mean, I was, you know, I took classes for this. I mean, I was, so I knew about who all, um, I knew a lot of ministers. And I knew of a lot of ministers and prophets and evangelists and bishops that, you know, were very, very well known, um, if not famous. Juanita Bynum. I mean, T.D. Um, T. Jakes. I mean, like, I, there was like, you know, I knew, I knew of people, you know, and, 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 you know, I read their books and I, and, I, and I studied. And, but there's this one woman I never heard of until about two days ago. And her name is Corey, C O R R I E, 10 as in the number 10, but T E N, boom, B O O M, Corey 10 boom. And, I was flipping through Facebook and I saw a quote somebody had put up about from from one of her books that she had written. And for y'all who don't know who she is, because I just found out myself, um, she was a woman that helped Jews um, in the Holocaust. You know, um, when the Holocaust was going on and Hitler was 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 um, you know, over all of that, um, she helped her, her father owned a watch shop and, um, they all worked there and helped him out in the watch shop. And, and, and the watch shop was in, if I'm not mistaken, Sweden. And, um, and so she grew up helping her father in this watch shop. And when, um, when Hitler came to be in power and decided to um, gather up all of the 
people of society that were Jews, um, her family helped to hide some of these people within their watch shop because their house, they lived above the watch shop. And then the watch shop was on the bottom. And they would help these people in passing, trying to get from one place to another. Some would stay for just a few hours and some would stay for months at a time. And they ended up um, knocking down a wall or adding, uh, adding on a wall and hiding these people in the wall so that when the Nazi police would come by and knock on people's door to see if they were hiding anybody and they would ramp, rampage the house and go through the house and, and nobody knew about this. It was It's similar to the Anne Frank story, which I know a lot about Anne Frank, um, except hers wasn't in like a room that could fit lots of people. This was like a small, this was like two walls and there they were. And it was a long wall and they just would sit there. And um, well, what happened was, um, and I do not remember the year, but it was in the 1930s, 1940s. Um, somebody ratted them out, ratted their family out and um, they got busted. And, um, but this is what happened. Um, everyone in her family, including her father, all of her brothers and sisters, everybody was arrested. And um, they weren't Jewish. Corey Ten Boom and her family were not Jewish. However, it had been, um, you know, discovered that they were hiding Jews in their homes. So that's why they, because you could be arrested and sent um, to prisons similar to concentration camps if you were even caught helping anybody that was Jewish. It didn't matter if they were a newborn baby or an el or an, an elderly person that was like almost 80 or 90. It didn't matter. You would be arrested and suffer um, and be put in these prisons where you were treated extremely bad. So and I'm sorry to keep carrying this on, but I'm just trying to get to my point here. So, and it's important that y'all know all of these details. Um, so her father passed away 10 days after being arrested that, you know, that day that, they, that everybody got taken. Um, he was an older man. Um, and her brothers and sisters died. And she was the only one that survived. Um, through it and she spent a long time I, I cannot remember how long how many years but it was it was years if I'm not mistaken it was a long time and she got sent to and she was sent to three different prisons um, she escaped um, when 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 the Nazi regime ended and um, what they claim happened to Hitler when he apparently committed suicide, he never did, y'all. He survived along with half of the other Nazi officers and they fled to another land. But that's a whole nother vlog. Um, but after his regime ended, she was freed. And um, she became seclusive for a little while. Um, and that's perfectly understandable, hello. But then she spent, I think it was the last 30 or 40 years of her life, because when this happened to her, I think she was like in, she was either 19 or 20, early 20s. Um, she spent the last, I think, 30 or 40 years, but I think it was 30 years of her life, preaching the gospel. Not, not necessarily preaching it, but witnessing to people about it and telling her story and about what it was like. And there's actually a movie that came out about her story and it's called The Hiding Place. And it's actually on YouTube. So you can look it up on YouTube. It's called, just just type in The Hiding Place movie and you'll see it. It's about two hours long, but it's, it's, it's it tells her story. And I wasn't able to watch it entirely at the beginning because when I discovered this woman, it was like, two to three days ago and um, I was curious about the movie so after I <coughs> I'm 
did some research on her and found out about this movie um, and looked it up on YouTube just to see if maybe it was on YouTube. I started watching it and I got through, I think, the first 30 minutes or hour and then it was the first hour and then I had to stop because it was, it's so much, you know, and um, she died, if I'm not mistaken, in 1983. And her, the car, um, the watch shop that her father owned, and that they helped out in, in, in and kept these people in, um, was turned into a museum that you can still go visit today. And the wall, let me get to the wall. The wall, what they did was they added bricks to build a wall within a wall, and then they put her bed in front of the hole. So, had the Nazi police kicked her bed, they would have found the hole against the baseboard. You know, I mean, the um, against the headboard. They never did. Well, what happened was, when, they, when the Nazi police came in that day and took her and her father and her brothers and sisters and arrested everybody, they had some people that were Jewish that they were hiding in the house. And before they, you know, when they came knocking... They, they put all of them up in that um, wall. And um, so when the Nazi police came and, you know, they, they ravaged the house, they, they kicked in walls, but they didn't know about that one wall. And when they arrested everybody, they still had these still, these people who were Jewish were still up in that wall. And they spent 40, I think it was 48 hours um, in that wall. With, with barely any water, barely any food, and they just sat there quiet because they didn't know what to do. They could have let, you know, these people could have been arrested, and then for all they, you know, for all these people kn knew, they could have had a Nazi police officer just chilling out in the home to see if anybody came out of a wall. You feel what I'm saying? Because a lot of these houses in that time had secret hallways and secret doors and passages. So they didn't know. And they just sat smushed up in, smushed up in this wall. And finally, 48, 48, um, 48 hours later, um, they were freed. Because some people that had... There were these underground people that were, that were a part of the underground movement to, to get these people from home to home to home. They knew... Once they found out that the, the Ten Boom family had been arrested that day, they knew that these people were still there and probably still up in that hiding place that these underground people knew exactly where it was. They knew exactly where it was. So 48, 48 hours later, they came and they freed these people. Um, three of the, because it was four of them, three of the four survived. Um, and then one of them died, if I'm not mistaken. But I... I just wanted to bring this up, and I'm sorry if, if I prolonged everything. I don't even know if y'all are still watching this, but this woman is amazing, and her story is amazing, and she's got these quotes, and you can just look them up online, Corey Ten Boom quotes, C-O-R-R-I-E, Ten, T-E-N, Boom, B-O-O-M. Corey Ten Boom quotes. And the first quote I read of hers, I just busted into tears. And, and, and I don't know where I put it because I wrote it down. Um, but, but I had the notes and maybe I should have found it before um, I did this vlog. But, um, It was just absolutely amazing, and I'm sorry, y'all. I can't. I don't know where, where I have it, but um, it just touched me, and I just broke down crying, crying because I don't know if it was just the way it was worded, the way she worded it when she. But 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 it's it's her quote, and it just it touched me, and I looked up some more of her quotes today. And I broke down crying. I keep saying that. Crying. Because they were just so 
beautiful and so true and real and you know they were Christians her family the Ten Boom family were Christians and you know this whole you know I'm one of those people where you know I'm a deep thinker I'm an old soul and so I can sympathize with people that are in need or people who are troubled even if it's just a little bird like that that's struggling to fly I can pick up on it and I can sense it and you know I'm not religious anymore but I'm very spiritual and I have my own relationship with God and with Christ and I guess this time is really bringing me back to him in a sense because you know I, I just you know doing music and doing hip hop and then trying to compete it with, with musically with, with other artists you know it was just this just really kind of woke me up a little bit and um And I've done a lot of crying. I've done so much crying. I don't even know if I have tears left. I've, I've, I've done so much praying. Crying out to God to open a door and make a way. Um, you know, you got people out in this world who, you know, spend all their money on, on clothes or you know the club or drinks and you know people who just you know they can't keep a job because every job they're at it's like only like the longest is two weeks you know those type of people and I'm just sitting here thinking about my situation and I'm like God nobody deserves you know not have a home or anything you know but especially those people who are only trying to survive, who are only trying to just make a way for them and their child or their children. You know, I don't drink. I don't, I don't go. The last time I went to a club was for a show. And as soon as it was done, you know, within five or 10 minutes, I'm gone. You know, like I'm 33. I quit the club scene, like in my early twenties cause I grew up fast. So that stuff doesn't interest me anymore. Going out to bars, it just it doesn't interest me anymore. <laughs> and it's been like that for almost 10 years. I just it doesn't interest me, you know? If it's not going to take me to to where I'm trying to go to, it doesn't interest me, you know? Um So I've just been sitting here talking to God like, you know, cuz at times I don't even know if he still hears me. I don't know if he even still hears my prayers. Sometimes I feel like I don't even know if he listens anymore. But I have hope. And I have faith. And damn it, if that's all I've got, it's got to count for something. It's got to count for something. So I just am praying to God. You know, when all of us have a story, we've all done stuff in our past that we may regret. Or looking back, you know, in hindsight, was like, why did I do that? It was so stupid, you know? Like, we're, we're growing. Constantly, we're growing. And it just, you know, there's things in our past, you know, that we just wish we never did. Maybe we got in trouble with the law with something, you know, but that was their only time, you know? Like, so every, all of us have a story, you know? And I just pray that my job interview tomorrow goes in my favor. Um, because I really needed to. So if y'all would just continue to keep me in your prayers. You know, it says it says it in the Bible that 
if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can still move mountains. You can move mountains. And, you know, when I left the church, I kind of forgot a lot of scripture because, you know, I studied the Bible inside and out when I was doing deliverance ministry and in the church and traveling. But, you know, when I left the church, um, you know, within six months of not reading my Bible or within a year, I had forgotten most of what I had learned as far as scripture. And But one scripture I never forgot was that scripture. And there was about two or three that I never forgot. But that was one of them, you know. And um, so God's really working my faith. I'm really trying to work my faith and my hope. And never, never try to kill somebody's hope. Because that may be all they've got is hope. And you know what, to be honest, I think all of us, we just want something better. You know, we just want a better life. We want our kids to have what we didn't have. We want to have what we didn't have as kids. We want a better life. And that's what you call hope. You hope for it. You work for it. And yes, you make mistakes along the way, bad decisions, but it's a part of life. And I just pray to God that this interview goes in my favor. And I'm sorry, it's going on 26 minutes. And I have a friend of mine um, who I would like for y'all to also keep in prayer. Um... He's, he's extremely talented. He's an MC in, in um, hip-hop. And um, I don't know exactly who was in the car with him. Um, I think it was... Um, uh, I don't know if his kids were in the car, but I think it was... Um, the mother of his children. I think maybe she was in the car. and um, But um, he got in a massive car wreck. Um, about I think about a week ago maybe a little bit longer but I'm not sure and um, he got he, he has like a little Honda car and it got hit by an 18 wheeler luckily thank God nobody died um, but he broke all four of his ribs and he cannot work for like six maybe eight weeks he has to just lay there He's back at the house, but he just has to kind of lay there, and he can't really do much because he's in so much pain trying to heal. Um, and his income was, like, the only income. Um, and so he's struggling right now. And, you know, when I think about his situation, I burst into tears because... I feel so bad, and, and, and I wish I could help out financially. But y'all know the situation I'm in. I'm, 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 I'm so, like, financially stressed out. But his name is Malik. Clinton. Malik. M-A-L-I-K Clinton. Like, President Clinton. If y'all could please just keep him and his family in your prayers. Um... You know, he's still got maybe four maybe four more weeks to go before he could even... And that's just to be able to walk around, you know. And, and, and you know, I don't know about when he'd go back to work. Maybe then, but still. There's a lot of people struggling right now, people. And it's easy to overlook that when you're not struggling. It's easy to overlook when, when you've got food to feed your kids. You've got shelter. For you, and, for you and your family. You've got money in your bank for you. and you. It's real easy. And I'm not talking about the people who waste their money or they're drug addicts or they're alcoholics or all they do is sleep around all day, can't keep a job. I'm not talking about those folk because those people, you know, they really need to just find life again. You know, they, they need a lot up in here because they're not motivated to better themselves. Um, but what I'm talking, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the people that, that, that just try to make life better, that go to work, that, 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 that do all they can 
to just try to make life better. And he's one of those people, you know? He just, he works his ass off and then for this to happen. And so it's just, you know, anyway, I'm going to end this vlog because now it's going on 30 minutes. But if y'all could just please keep me in your prayers that this job interview goes to go, you know, goes well tomorrow. Um, there was one place that I used to work at that was a lot similar to this warehouse job that um, I'm going to be interviewed at tomorrow. But there was this other place that I used to work at that was a lot similar to it. Um, like back in like 03 or something. I mean, it was like a long time ago. And um, I called them today, spoke with the manager to see if I could possibly... Um, get my job back uh, because it was just a job that I was at. I was at that job for almost five years but um, I had quit because I had relocated and so I, I called them to see if I could you know work there you know work for them again and um, they said I would need to speak to the general manager who wasn't there today um, he'll be back tomorrow morning and that warehouse job is up the street from the warehouse job that I'm going to be interviewed at for tomorrow and it's the same one that I went to today and met with them during that pre-interview process so um I've got those are like that those two and you know this this retail store where I spoke with that manager and filled out the paper application act because they didn't have any apps online um I've got that one, then this interview tomorrow at this warehouse, and then that job I used to work at. Those are my three new leads now, and I'm just praying, um, but I'm really praying that this one tomorrow at this warehouse job works out. So if y'all could please just keep me in your prayers that um, it'll work out um, for me. I don't know if it's part-time or full-time, but I know the pay is good. I know the pay is good and so it would really help me right now and once again this is MC Aggie St. James and um I'm just giving y'all my vlog for the day and keeping y'all updated um I love y'all and thank you to everybody who has shown me support because it really means a lot because right now I feel so alone I feel so, I mean, to say I feel alone is like lightly because I don't know of any other word to describe how alone I feel, <laughs> but I'm just trying to find some peace of mind the best way I can, so I just appreciate all of the love and support <laughs> from everybody. Um, it really means a lot, you know, um. I would love to have a meal right now because I have been like eating salty crackers with cheese and then um, graham crackers for like over a month. Like I'm just, but you know, it's okay <laughs> because it's all going to work out because I got hope and I got faith and it may be the size of a mustard seed, but I got it. <laughs> so thank you for watching and um, Hopefully tomorrow I'll have a really good vlog to share with y'all. Thank you.